Hi, I'm Priya. I'm a final year accounting and finance student and I'm a lead mentor for my course. So I'm here to talk about time management. So today I'm going to go over these four aspects. So the importance of time management, my experience personally with time management and different methods that you could consider. And finally, we'll go over some steps you can take to try and apply these time management methods. So the importance of time management, why does it matter and its relevance to you? So time management is a key skill. So hopefully it will make your university workload a bit more manageable and a bit less overwhelming. And it's relevant to anyone at any point in university and beyond. So for first years, you might be experiencing the burden of uni assignments and exams for the first time. So knowing how to manage that is really important. If you're in your second year, you might be considering applying for a year in industry or study abroad program or even just preparing for your final year. So now would be a great time to try and master your time management. And for final year students, you might be balancing a dissertation with the rest of your final year workload. So now would be a great time as well to try and perfect that. So my experience with time management. So 2019 to 2020 was my first year of university. And there were lots of opportunities on offer, more opportunities than you can obviously take on, sadly. Um, and I was really keen to take on lots of sports, but sadly I didn't have time for that. And I'd already started both hockey and boxing, but due to time commitments, I just couldn't manage both, especially when I wasn't managing my time in the best way. So I had to sacrifice hockey, sadly. Um, also, in my first year, me and my flatmates spent a lot of time making each other birthday cakes whenever it was somebody's birthday. So lots of evenings spent on that, making some underwhelming cakes. Um, and finally, because I wasn't managing my time in the best possible way, I had lots of late nights trying to finish assignments and having to order pizza because I felt I didn't have time to cook just because I wasn't planning. So my second year of university, was remote learning so the pandemic could hit and I was forced to try and manage my own university workload and schedule my own learning for the first time and I also tried to apply for placement years because I felt like I needed something to actually give me some real life work experience while I was at university um, and this was an added pressure because applications take a lot of time and I was having to try and make sure I wasn't sacrificing my university workload for the sake of these applications. Um, so I tried time blocking and I'll go into that a little later on. But I was basically trying to schedule my commitments and then fit in work around that to make sure that I was getting everything done and trying not to miss deadlines. So my third year was my placement year. And I did my placement at IBM in a finance role. So my placement year meant I had the newfound responsibility of lots of real tasks um, for the account, which felt very important. And I was expected to become more efficient as my year went on. So managing my time was a really important aspect to that. I took my time blocking method a bit more seriously. So I tried to block off time in my diary to make sure that I was completing the tasks I was expected to produce. Um, and avoiding double booking myself in meetings or other commitments. And actually being efficient at managing my time made sure that I could get the most out of my year. So I was able to take on additional responsibilities such as leading a community, which is basically the placement equivalent of society. So I was doing additional work to give back to my intern community and that helped me then secure a graduate role with the company. So different methods you could consider for time management. So time blocking is the first method that I've covered on the handout that you'll be able to access. And then there's getting things done, the Pomodoro technique, which is quite a common one, and Parkinson's law, which is technically not a method, but it can be applied to time management. So time blocking. The method is essentially that you'll write down each hour of the day that you'll be awake and using and then estimate the time it will take you to complete the activities that you know you need to get done 
Um, you can add in buffer times to make sure that if things overrun, you don't suddenly fall behind schedule. Um, but yeah, it's basically making sure you can fit in your tasks and responsibilities and actually visually see when you're going to get things done. So who might those methods suit? It's definitely helpful for busy students. If you've got a lot of responsibilities such as sport, maybe work outside of university or just your family. Um, it also is helpful for analytical thinkers. And then the guessing things done technique. So the idea is that you capture the actions that you have to be completed so you can see everything you need to do. You then clarify what those actions themselves mean. And then think about whether they're actionable. So can you get them done now, right now, within two minutes? If they're not, ignore them for now. If they are actionable now, get them done. So if they're doable now and they're not doable right now, then you can plan to do them ahead of time. So you know when you're going to get them done and you're sure that it is going to happen. Um, if it is doable right now, as I said, get them done and then you know it's out of the way. And then once you've done this, you can reevaluate and think about what's next in terms of what you have to do and what can be completed. So this might see students who feel overwhelmed with work because you're actually thinking about what you have to do and what can actually be done. So you're not worrying about things that can't quite get done yet. And it also might help students who prefer to focus on one thing at a time. So lots of people think about juggling lots of things at once and that making you more efficient, but actually it slows you down. So if you actually do prefer to focus on one thing at a time, this is a really good way of figuring out what's the best thing to focus on and get done right now. So the Pomodoro technique. The idea is that you choose a task to complete. You then set the timer to get that done. That could be 25 to 50 minutes, whatever works for you. And then try to focus on the task and avoid distractions, which is easier said than done. But when that timer ends, you then take a little break. And as you repeat the steps, that little break you take can slowly increase. So if each time you do this and you get the work done, every time that timer hits, you make a little check mark. And then once your little tally has reached four checks, you can start taking longer breaks, for example. So this method might suit creative thinkers and also students who feel burnt out or overwhelmed. So in second year, when I had a lot of responsibilities and tasks on my to-do list, I tried using this method because I felt like it was a good place to start because we're making some progress, but in manageable terms. And finally, Parkinson's law. So Cyril Parkinson said that work expands as so to fill the time for its completion. So the idea and applications of this are examples including working without a computer charger. So the idea is that you get the work done. So the task that you need to complete, you try to do that before your computer runs out of battery. And it's sort of adding that time pressure to it. So it's really helpful if you sort of thrive on the pressure and you usually leave assignments last minute because you're creating that kind of pressure environment. But also, you know that the time pressure isn't really there. Like you can charge your computer later. And then also an idea is that you set yourself a deadline and then halve that. So you're again creating that time pressure for yourself and forcing yourself to work um, to get that work done ahead of time. So this might suit procrastinators who often leave work to the last minute or people who just thrive under pressure. So if you know that you often leave essays right to the last minute and end up getting it all done right on the last evening, but maybe you don't want to do that and want to get work done ahead of time, you can recreate that kind of pressure environment for yourself. And then finally, some steps to take. So if you're not too sure about which method suits you, you might want to try one or have a go at a few and then see which one suits you. There might already be one that stands out to you. So have a play with that and find one that sort of works for you. So it's not necessarily that, say you meet the scenario and you're a very busy student, the first method might still not suit you. 
So have a go at them all if possible and just find one that works for you. And try to identify your distractions and avoid them. I know it's a lot easier said than done, but I personally find myself very distracted by my phone. So when I know I've got work to complete, I try to leave my phone in a place where I can't reach it until I've got that work done. So even that, if that means locking your phone in a drawer or throwing it to the other side of the room, do something or leave it with somebody so you know you're not going to be distracted while you need to get that work done. And it might be tough if you live with a lot of other people or don't necessarily have your own space to study quietly, but think about steps you can take to deal with that. So maybe finding time to have silent study sessions in the library if you like to work silently, or if you like to work collaboratively but you're going home for the holidays, maybe consider having a study session over Teams. It's also helpful to let everybody around you know your intentions in terms of getting work done because they can hold you accountable and also try to avoid distracting you. So that might just be a conversation with someone or putting a note on your bedroom door to say that you need to get this done. And it is hard to try and get all this done without being somewhat critical of yourself, but try to make sure you're taking enough breaks and avoid being too hard on yourself. If you feel like you've got a big workload, you may think it's counterintuitive to take lots of breaks, but it means that you're not going to burn out, which is the most important thing. And be willing to adapt to your circumstances because there are things that will pop up which you can't avoid and you've got to try and be flexible to get past those. Also, little things might help. So I found in my second year of university, naps were really helpful for me. If you can power nap, that's a great way to get your energy levels back up. Might not work for everybody, but just find what works for you. And yeah, hopefully some of these time management methods will be helpful. Do you think 